Some of you will recognize the name Corrie Ten Boom. She was a Holocaust survivor and a Christian. And because of their family's faith, they were harboring Jews who were fugitives. They did that for years until they were caught in February of 1944. Corey and her sister, Betsy, were put into a concentration camp. And when they first arrived, they walked into the, the barracks and they had bunk beds stacked four high, four or five women in each bunk bed. It smelled of excrement and disease. It was a horrible, horrible place. And Betsy began to cry, oh God, oh God, how can we survive here? And most didn't. And it got worse. They started to get bitten. They couldn't see what was biting them, so they went over to the thin shaft of life that was leaching in through the door, and they saw that they were covered with fleas. And Betsy said, oh God, oh God, how can we survive in a place like this? And in that moment, God gave her the answer. And she said to her sister, Corey Ten Boom, as soon as I prayed, God gave me the answer. You remember we read this morning from 1 Thessalonians 5, give thanks in every situation. And Corey said, what do we have to be thankful for in a death camp? And she said, we can be thankful to God that we're here together. And Corey said, yes, I can, I can thank God for that. And we can be thankful for God that there's so many women packed in here who do not know Christ and we can tell them about Christ. Corey said, yes, I can thank God for that. And she pulled out of her pocket a Bible that she smuggled in and she said, we can thank God that I was able to smuggle in a Bible. Yes, I can thank God for that. But even God can't make me thankful for fleas. As the months rolled by, Betsy got more and more ill. It got to the point where she couldn't go and work outside the camp. Oh, that's a death sentence. Except that she could knit. And the sickest women they allowed to knit because the German soldiers needed socks. And every day they had a quota of how many socks they had to knit. Because Betsy was lightning fast knitting, she finished her quota by noon. And the rest of the day she went from bunk to bunk to bunk reading scripture to the women who needed the good news of Jesus Christ. One day there was an argument because they didn't know how many of different sizes of socks they had to make. So they went and asked the guard outside the door, would you tell us, uh, would you come in and tell us how many of different socks sizes we need to meet our quota? And they said, no. He said, but, but we don't know how we are to fulfill your expectations. So as our supervisor, you need to tell us what we need to do. And they said, no, we're not going in your barracks. Why won't you come in our barracks? And the guard said, because it's flea infested. <laughs> when Corey came in from her shift that day, Betsy was beside herself. Corey, Corey, I found out why the guards don't come in here. Why they haven't come in and searched our belongings and discovered our Bible. I, I discovered why the guards won't come in here and stop every night when we have a worship service. I've discovered why the guards don't come in and beat us like they do the other women. The guards told me they will never come on our barracks because of fleas. And they thank God for the fleas. Look, some of you right now, you got fleas. They're biting you. And it's horrible. No one's questioning that. They're horrible. But can you believe in the goodness of God that he can even use fleas to draw you closer to him.